Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. Today I am playing with Decor Art Stylin, which is paint for fashion accessories. And on the um, information that came with the box, it um, showed a pair of shoes. And if you've been following me for a while, you will know that I attempted to paint some shoes a little while ago, um, just before I went to Japan, and um, <laughs> I just painted them with normal paint, and I didn't give them any time to cure, and I didn't put anything special on them. I didn't even wipe them down with alcohol before I started, and um, they, needless to say, as soon as I walked in them, the paint through the crease portion of the shoe just completely popped off and went bizarre and haywire and yucky so when um decal art sent me some of this paint to try um pouring mixed with their um pouring medium um guess what jumped into my head so that's exactly what I did. I jumped in the car and went down and bought a, another pair of these shoes. This is not the same pair of shoes. Um, and the funny thing is, in the pack that they sent me is this paint, this beige, which is almost identical to the colour that um, was in was the, the shoes are. So... Um, so what I've just done there is just put a single coat on the shoe. Um, and the reason for that is I have absolutely no intention of doing anything that could cause this paint to fall off. And one of the things that could cause it is if, because I'm mixing this with silicon, which is against company policy. They don't recommend you do it. Um, they don't guarantee results if you do it. But I like cells. <laughs> what I'm doing at the moment is just mixing a 50-50 batch. 15 mils of blue and 15 mils of the pouring medium. Um, this is considered a control uh, a what do you call it a craft paint and so they their recommendation is to start out mixing it 50 50 and then add more pouring medium to get the consistency that you like because that is too, still too thick um i am going to be using um going to be using that beige colour in the pour and mixing it with blue and red and a little touch of black. Now this blue has mixed up really beautifully and it still looks blue in the pot which is awesome. Right, just take a I've already mixed up my beige and my red and as you can see the red when it mixed in with the pouring medium is extremely diluted in colour which concerns me a little. The bottle itself like the paint colour is really strong and yet when I mixed it 50-50 it's diluted down a bit so hopefully that's okay. Hopefully that's going to come out good. Uh, I didn't shake the bottle and I'm wondering if that is one of the problems. I have wiped these shoes down with alcohol and left them to dry afterwards. This is what they looked like before I paint them. And I have taped off the bottom and the inside. Hopefully to try and decrease the amount of mess I make. So why did I put that layer of brushed on beige, which was straight out of the pot, 
because when I put the silicon into the paint, I really don't desire to have it. Um, what's the word? Oh, the silicon rising, like hitting the non painted surface and rising up and leaving a gap where the paint is not, where there is no paint. I want them to be, be completely painted. Um, so that's my target. Seems to have worked when I in the um, purse that I did. So that's all good. Now before I move on to doing anything else, I'm going to put gloves on. Why? Because I have struggled to get this stuff off my skin. Um, if it's on there for any length of time, it dries really, really well and stays there. <laughs> so warning, wear gloves if using this paint. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to be using the beige, the blue, the red, and a little bit of black. Uh, I've only got a little bit of black there. But I'm going to be putting, um, I'm going to treat the beige as if it's white. And only put silicon in the red and the blue. And I have put a huge amount of silicon in both of those. So let's hope that works. So I'm going to do these two cups completely separate because I don't want this drying on the other one before I get to it. So let's create... our cups first of all and then just add up or two of black I don't want much black I just would like can you guys see this oh yeah cool um and I'm gonna go up from up high The other thing is, if I decide I need to use more paint between between mixes, I can. I can stop and mix some more. Because right now I'm getting quite a bit of paint in there. And because I'm going to be pouring around a huge area, I'm just going to give it a couple of stirs just to give it some mixture. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Who knows? So... Go for it. See why I put paint stuff in them inside? Come on. I know you want to come out. Just getting some flow. So 
the quantities to flow, covering it all. And guess what? There she blows. Wow, that's looking amazing. Hee <laughs> hee! And that's without even torching, guys. Look at the cells. Awesome. All right. Now, what I have learned from previous multiple pours like this and 3D pours is to get it up off the ground so I've put some little tins underneath there so that it can drip and to really let it drip a lot before you torch it because otherwise those cells come up and as they run off they just disappear and that's not cool. But there's not a lot of red in there. What would it take for some more of that to show up? Now, that is looking super duper cool. Let's do the other one. See what magic we can create with that one as well. Uh, clean cup. Just going to stay looking at that one for you while we fill up the new cup. Um, give my gloves a quick wipe down with a tissue. Just so we're not dripping. Alright, so we started off with the beige. And then we went blue. And then we went red. And then we had a plane fall up, fly overhead. And then dip. It's quite a bit of black there. And then let's go blue again. And red again. Really hoping this red like vibrance up as it dries. The pouring medium does dry clear, so there will definitely be a change in colour. Right. So, what do we do next? I'll put a couple of drop, more drops of black. Anyway. And then I stirred it. Okay. Right, bring you back to the center, to our drip spot. <laughs> and I'm going to put my tins out ready for this one this time. Let's get rid of these. Over to the side. My tins. Alright, so I'm just going to use what's left of this first tin just to I don't know try and start something off something that will get the 
because oh, I haven't painted underneath this. <gasps> no, I've just smeared oil all over this. Ah, oh. stop right there, ba ba ba. Before you go any further, get rid of that. Ah. Right. Oh, I feel so silly. Maybe I should use this as a control option. See if it makes any difference. Painted and not painted. And I'll end up with two shoes that are different, maybe. <laughs> They're going to be different anyway. But. Well, yeah, let's do that. Let's see if putting the control paint, the and the silicon paint on first makes any difference. Alright. Let's do it. In the name of science. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. I'm putting new gloves on off screen. If you're wondering what I'm doing. Alright. Now, what I've learned from doing previous shoes is if you start going that way around on one shoe, you've got to go the other way around so that you're pouring down the same side, like the outer side. Does that make any sense? So let's give that a go. Just pull that down. And carry on. Once again, need to cover up that heel area so that this can all run down over it. If you've got a wet space with acrylic pouring, if the space is already wet, the paint will run down it. But if the paint, if there isn't, just like on a river, guys, if there is a wet area, it will run. If there is no wet area, it will find the easiest path, which may not be down the part that you want it to run. Okay. This one's come out beautiful as well. I just want to get a little bit more paint down that heel. Come on. There you come. Yes, no, maybe. All right, how's that one looking? Pretty cool too. All right. So, 
Another thing I've had happen, let's see if I can, let me just lift you up. Another thing I've had happen um, in the past when painting 3D objects, especially shoes, um, is that I've left one, painted the other one, and then gone back and torched that one. And because torching is a lot faster than painting, that one doesn't get left quite so long. And uh, so it's still running a lot more by the time I get around to torching it. And it runs more than I want it to. So what I thought I'd do is I'll torch this one and then give me a little bit more time between before I go ahead and torch the other one I'll see if I can make some jewellery out of the leftover paint so whoop, without dropping things so let me get my torch actually before I do that I'm going to get you down and I'm going to show you two sets of gloves um, show you these pieces as they are right now and then we can go from there all right so this is shoe number one cinderella would be very proud to wear that to the ball i would have thought take you around the back keep try and keep you in focus Oops. heels This is the inside side of the shoe. Okay. And here's the other one. Now this is the inside of the shoe. very luscious I like it I like it a lot they're both different but they're both luscious I'm wondering how much purple is actually going to emerge from the red and blue really intrigued to see how red this comes out <laughs> so let's let's get the torch Oh, that's what I dropped on the floor. <laughs> okay. I torched it. And nothing new really has decided to appear. Sorry, I thought I was torching. It was recording before and it wasn't my apologies but the cells seem to have already come up in the pore so we'll give it a little bit of time for the other one to catch up in the drippability while we have a look and see if there's anything in here okay so if you're new to my channel and haven't seen me creating magic with paints and cabochons before um This will be new to you because I'm not sure if anybody else is duplicating me with this. Um, but what I do is instead of leaving the paint to dry and then cutting it out and gluing it on a, in a um, into a pendant and then sticking resin on top or sticking a um, cabochon glass cabochon on the top what I've taken to doing is um, I've got paint on that I might clean that off with some alloy some alcohol Let's grab another one instead always check 
check your cabochons before you use them guys sometimes they do get damaged in the transit um, and it pays to see if there is actual damage that's not going to come off and is going to ruin the pendant or whether it is not what is going on in this batch crikey bejeebas better um and yes i do clean things on my t-shirt heathen i know <laughs> i grew up on an orchard one of the um must have been about eight and one of the Pickers um, taught me to blow my nose on my t-shirt. My mother was mortified. <laughs> All right. So down here, I have spotted a little patch that is quite pretty. Um, so avoiding the shoe, I am going to dip in. And rolling it allow that paint to come into contact and uh, just sometimes you get a spot that doesn't quite fill in oops sorry out of focus that's quite pretty I like that and so when I finished when I've picked up the paint I just popped them off to one side sitting with the rounded edge up and um, all is good now this piece here oh, come on camera sit right this piece here drained out of um, out of the cup and I happen to have one teardrop cabochon left which this is a teardrop shape so how does it get any better than that alright uh, so I'm actually going to drop it in point first and push back and see how many layers that picks up. How's that? That's stunning. I really like that. That looks like a piece of stone, if ever I saw one. Alright. Now, I think that is probably all I'm going to get out of this lot. At least at this point. And it's time to do the other shoe. So come Cinderella, let us check out our other shoe over here. You can see the cabochon sitting upside down over there. And let's see if we've got a similar situation to the other one where nothing really shows up. Oh, these are beautiful! Oh, I hope they're telling me the truth. That this stays on shoes. 
I'm very grateful to Deco Art for sending me these samples. Um, so I get to play with them and share with you the results that I've got. I'm having um, that first. Nothing's really happening. So that first wallet that I painted, um, the coin wallet, I'm carrying it around with me in my jeans back pocket. Um, and I'm carrying it painted side towards my bum. So when I move, it's being rubbed. We're testing here, guys. We're testing. Uh, and I'm pulling it in and out of my pocket a couple of times a day, two or three times a day, whenever I remember, really. Um, just to give it a bit of usage and a bit of feel of how it's going to work. Right, I'm going to get you down and show you one more time what's going on close up. And then I'm going to put these to dry. Because they're looking very fabulous and I very much like them. And as per normal with pouring, you cannot get too identical. So this is the inner side of the shoe, of the right shoe. It's a bit of interesting stuff going on with the colour of the blue there, but it looks cool. So as long as it's going to hang in there, I'm happy. up and over the top again if I had these on a these are Susan I would be able to just turn them around for you but I haven't I'm trying to move things out of the way so that the camera doesn't touch the shoe so this is the oh, what's going on there I've got a big patch Oh, that is not blank spot. That is just where the paint, beige paint, has, um, all right. I might have a look at that because that might look really weird. Let's have a look. That does look really weird, but I don't know whether we can salvage that. Hmm. All right, hang in there. Okay, so I've just got another tin here so I can just turn this around. Eek. Hmm. What do you reckon? If that was walking to away from you, what would you say? Does it need fixing? Yes or no? Or is that just a really good place for me to sign them? <laughs> uh, funny. Can you imagine walking along seeing Mickey art written? That would be quite cool, actually. Yep, I'm going to leave it. Because that's what I'm going to do. That's where I'm going to sign it. Alright. Plan made. <laughs> but first of all, I'm going to let them dry. So guys, thank I will be back. Um, now, it does say to let it cure for 24 to 48 hours. So I'm going to let it dry. And then once it's dry then start the 48 hour timer so this video might be a few days in the making but we'll be back in three your time three two one all right so these have dried very quickly and easily um it's about oh i don't know 24 hours later 
and um, I'm just going to run my blade through that line where the masking tape is. Just along the sole. Um, I mean, it does say to leave for um, you know, 48 hours to cure, two or three days to cure. And um, I want to get this masking tape off reasonably soon. Um, the, I've got to be careful though, because like the paint here where it's been sitting on the tin is still actually damp um, but I want to get that off so that it doesn't what's that word harden and become a danger to itself I'm pulling the paint and the tape, uh, the shoe and the tape in opposite directions all the way around just so that it peels away. Um, you can see how, because I cut it, it's coming away really easily from the sole. Uh, no, see that was my problem. I went off the line. Try to be careful with. Okay. So that's where I cut wrong. All right. And because it's down underneath there, I can just touch it up with a little bit of paint later. Now I'm hoping this masking tape does not do what the previous masking tape did on the black, the first black one. Yep, that's come away nicely. So there we have a pretty, pretty shoe. And the next step with this, as I said, was to write Mickey art through there. And leave this to cure for a few days um, I'd like to clean this up a little bit more um, but I'll go through and do the same on this shoe this one's looking pretty as well I'm very happy with those and they do look like a pair even though they are different so if I'm walking down the street wearing those People's going, people are going to notice, but they're not going to go, oh, she's wearing odd shoes. <laughs> um, they'll notice that there's something different, but they won't necessarily go into judgment. So I'm going to get the rest of this cleaned up and leave them for a couple of days. Let them really um, secure themselves in here because <laughs> uh, that's where it all cracked up on the last pair. And uh, I will be back to show you how they go. Um, yeah. Does it get any better than this? All right. It's Charlie's puppies on. Yep. Well, this isn't comfortable. There we go. Yay. Oh, I like them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like them. Whoop! <laughs> Yay! 
you, baby. I'm walking in my new shoes. I'm walking in my new shoes. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Have they cracked yet? Have they cracked yet? <laughs> no. 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 No cracks yet. <gasps> Alright, I'm gonna walk in them for a couple of hours and see how they go. I'll be back super soon. I have wandered around in them. I have stretched and bent and done pirouettes and all sorts of things in these lovely little pieces of joy. So let's have a look. How did they go? How did they succeed in surviving? Da -da. Oh yeah yeah. Happy Mickey. Super happy Mickey. There is no cracks. There is no peeling. That happened within the first five steps with the other shoes. So I am super duper duper oop ooper happy. I reckon these will last guys. If they have survived that, they will survive a decent amount of time. So thumbs up to Deco Art for their style and paint. Thumbs up to me for painting my shoes and never giving up, never giving in and never quitting. And how much fun can you have painting your world? <laughs> oh, maniacal laughs are fun too. Um, so Come join us on Acrylic Pouring for fun. See what other magic other people are making and share with us all what you have been creating. Um, I'm so happy they worked. They stayed in on, well the paint stayed on the shoes and I have some pretty shoes to wear this summer. Yay! Alright guys, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you in another video really soon. Bye bye!